Yeah, so... Uh, what, surely not. I mean, what do you mean? What do you mean it's safe to come out? Really? Oh. Oh, well, okay. If it's safe to come out, then... Um, I can ditch the... Uh, ditch the mask. I, I think I'm doing it right, aren't I? Oh. Hello, everyone. Well, yes, of course, it's only me. Um, sorry. And, um... It's update time on the Hummer. Look at her. She's almost done. She's got glass and everything you can see there. Look, in the windows too. Yeah, she's um, she's been out for a first run. So it, it, it's very nearly time to call it a day on, on, on the Hummer. Now, I've done this video today because I'm kind of done with the interior. So not a lot's changed on the outside. Um, most of the work I've done has been on the inside, so I was going to give you a quick tour of all of that. What have I done? You've seen in the previous videos, the first video, the gunner's station being built up, which is uh, not a very complicated affair, really. A couple of uprights glued in place, although they have uh, slightly come adrift in the uh, when I've been fitting this guy in, because these figures are Call of Duty figures. And they're very articulate. Sorry, they articulate really nicely. Uh, deliberate mistake, I guess. Um, and they are they they, they they look really cool. They're, they're kind of proper scale size and everything else. Uh, yeah, this guy's been painted. Uh, I just painted him last night. Because he was in some kind of uh, bloody attire. Uh, some sort of butcher. Don't quite know what that's all about. But um, And I've got a much more military looking guy up front. Now, the only thing with them is, is they, they they are a bit wide, so I'll say that straight away. They are a bit wide for uh, the crew compartment, so the, they have to be kind of offset slightly to get the doors shut. This guy's the gunner at the back, so we're obviously going to have a crow's turret on the top eventually, and uh, this is the gunner station for that. So I scratch built the uh, little centre console with the joystick. Um, I've also divided off the rear bed from the crew compartment. I think looking at photos these come with various different separating mechanisms or none at all as it, as it would uh, it would appear which of course gives you a nice long straight through load loading facility. The battery you'll remember is at the front now um, up by the uh, up by the servo and the electrics instead of being in the back. And that aside I've dealt with their accessories. The, 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 the accessories that these guys come with is pretty cool. Uh, so we've got the um, I've got a th this guy's belt. I've taken that off so you can sit down properly. So that's glued on the top of the radio here. We've got um, this guy's M4. I've made a made a sling for it. I've made a docking station out of some spare bits and bobs. A, a sort of gun holder thing so it sits up in the centre of the dash. Uh, the, this guy's rucksack also is just loose in the in, in the front seat at the moment. That's going to get. I haven't finished painting that yet properly. It's a funny rubbery soft rubber, so the paint's having a bit of trouble sticking to it. And yeah, that's about that's about all I've done. Um, as I said, the driver is is an army guy. He's one of the Call of Duty guys, so he's full military paraphernalia. This this mad scientist guy in the back. I've had to tone him down slightly so that he's a little less. Um, mad professor and more kind of army looking guy um, then, then really that and I've put a couple of washes on, on, on the interior That that's really all I've done there's not been a whole bunch of fancy fancy stuff done um, I've dry brushed highlighted up the edges of things the radio and, the, and, and, and some of the panel edges the door edges and things uh, scuff marks and the like and I've put a, a dark wash and then I've put a light a light muddy kind of wash over various bits of it just to put a bit of um, different tone on. You're not going to see a great deal of this because it's a big heavy uh, roof, it's quite small windows so there's not, you know, unless unless I put a camera inside which I quite like to do because there is room and a big hatch at the back to get in. So uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, originally I wasn't going to do very much at all to the interior but then as I kind of worked with it I felt that, that there is actually going to be scope to see some of this uh, detail as as we're filming and um, certainly depending on how we film uh, it's going to be his hand suspiciously shaped hand around 
the joystick. So I'll show you what I mean there. You see, uh, there you go. You can see he's a bit I'm getting a bit of interference. I'll shove him along in his seat to get the door shut. So yeah, it's 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 definitely coming together. I mean, I could go to town on this. There is a mountain of detail to do to this. I'm kind of itching to have a go at that radio. Um, I'd love to see lots of wires coming out of it. Oh, I have got a set of headphones. I think I showed you them before that I've made that uh, are upstairs. They need to be um, uh, put into this. That'll be the final touch. Maybe a headphone cord to the radio. Um, and that's all I'm going to be doing. I'm trying to restrain myself. We've got a Wales trip coming up to go and see RC Crawlers Mid Wales out there. And uh, this is coming with us. So it's got to be kind of done. So yeah, that, that's where it is. Uh, I'm, I'm really pleased with it. I think the effort of painting it was worth it. And I'm, I'm really excited about seeing her out on the trails. The, the, check our Instagram page out, the photos, the little video clips I've done. Even just half-heartedly filming it with a gimbal, it really does look the part. Slight lack of suspension travel is a, is a thing. Still would like to sort the shocks out properly, but uh, otherwise I, I, I couldn't be happier with this rig. It really has delivered, as I say, for an RTR, which is really what it is. Don't, yeah, you can't be an RTR snob, but this, this thing is a proper heavy-duty kit. On the downside, I am a little concerned that there is just beginning to be a little bit of play in some of the suspension, the front suspension steering does have quite a lot of sort of play in the various joints as if things are just widening in the C-hubs and things like that. Um, so we'll have to see how that goes. But otherwise, I'm, I'm, I'm very, very pleased with that. I think she's pretty much on the money. The frontal aspect is awesome. She looks so hench. And when those little spotlights, the little uh, indicator lights and things are painted up, um, the headlights are kind of cool. They've, they've, one of them has gone really white, as you can see. But it's, you know, it's a military truck. Who cares? It's going to have odd things about it. The paint, you can see the fading there. See how kind of uneven. I haven't done that. That's come out. That's how it was airbrushed on, which is uh, not great, but works nicely. So it's all kind of coming together, which is is, is, a, is a really nice. Um, a really nice thing. So there you go. I, I hope this is a little shorter than normal. And the next instalment, obviously, once I get these lights painted up, I'm then going to start dealing with the exterior. So there'll be a separate video on what I've done to the currently untreated exterior. Okay, so um, thanks for joining in. And um, oh, I can't even get down this time. I can't be bothered to move the camera. So I shall just wave with my chubby uh, arthritic old fingers uh, goodbye. Uh, it's goodbye from him. It's goodbye from me. Okay. Toodaloo. See you next time. Stop moaning. I know you don't want to sit in the back, right? I know you both want to sit at the front, but one of you's got to be in the back. Oh my goodness me.